everybody. I'm Deb Luttrell from Stitch in Heaven and baseball season has opened and I have got a home run of a project to share with you to share with you today. Go Rangers. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Scrap Crazy. Scrap Crazy is my favorite project because it's fast. It's that project that you go to when you need a baby gift, you need a wedding gift, someone who's in the hospital that you need a a um, treatment cover for. It's just something that you can make when you don't want to spend a lifetime on something, but you need something nice. So that's Scrap Crazy. Scrap Crazy is made um, using, best using layer cakes or 10 inch squares, which is what we're going to talk about today. I want to show you the quilt. This one I have behind me is made from a collection of layer cakes by uh, Thomas Treasures, and it is a beautiful way to do a patriotic, to do a Quilts of Valor, and look at the backing on this quilt. Isn't that beautiful? So, your, la your quilts are going to look any, you know, any way depending on how your layer cake is. If you love your layer cake, you're going to love your quilt. <clears throat> but let's get right to how to do this. I'm just going to give you a few tips. I'm going to tell you that you need your Scrap Crazy template set. This is the set by uh, Karen Montgomery. Um, it's produced by Creative Grid Rulers, and it's going to come with instruction. Really, everything I'm going to tell you today is in these instructions. And um, you can follow along here just really easy. A couple of things that aren't in this instruction is our helper tool. We're going to give you this little helper template every time you purchase a template set from us. So that's going to be included. So you'll need your scrap crazy templates. You're going to need a really good cutting mat, a rotary mat, rotating like this. I recommend the Martelli mat. It's an excellent, excellent product. You won't um, be sorry you, you bought it. It will last you forever. You're going to need a good rotary cutter. I like Tula Pink's rotary cutter just because it's very well balanced and it's um, uh, easy to use. And I, you're going to need a thread cutter block. And I'll show you why you're going to need this in just a minute. So, let's get started. What you're going to do, I'm just going to show you a few things about cutting. This helper tool that I was telling you about, you use this just for your first cut. And the reason you need it is because you need to be sure when you make that first cut that you have enough space on the left hand side to get the two shapes that you're going to need for over here. And that's the only time you use this, but it is really important because if you don't cut that just right, you may short yourself and you may ruin your layer cake. So you cut that and then you're going to be cutting an A piece, a B piece, two C pieces, and a D piece. Really, really easy. The main thing with the cutting that I want to point out to you is that you don't want to, you want to use the cuts you've already made. Like on this A piece that I'm about to cut, I'm not going to have to cut this top section here. I'm only going to cut this side, this side, this side, and then the tips are engineered so you can cut off the tips. So I've done that. Then I'm going to cut a C piece right here. And because I've already cut the top and the side, I no longer have to cut those off. So we're going to be cutting the bottom and the side. And then I'm going to also trim off the tip. Now do you see why you need a really good rotary mat? You notice how much I swing this around to get to what I need to cut and I don't have to be going like this or like this to be doing my cutting. So on the D piece, same thing, we don't, we don't have to cut the side and the top. We only cut the bottom and this side. And there's the D piece. <clears throat> then we come to this other side over here and we have to get two pieces out of this section. We're going to do the C piece, so I don't have to cut this side. Cut the bottom, 
I cut off the tip, turn my martelli around, cut the top and the side. Okay, got that cut. And then we're gonna cut the B piece. The B piece is just a short version of the A. I usually trim off the end of my set here and then I can just, I don't have to cut that side or this side. I cut that part, turn off the tip, and spring, swing around and cut off the top. All right, so that's what you do basically. Just You go through your entire layer cake. A lot of times people ask me how many layers I cut. I cut as many layers as I can because the more layers you can cut, the quicker it is that you're going to get through this. Now, once you cut your lay, all of your layer cake, your stack is going to look something like this. Okay? So what you want to do first thing is you want to shuffle these around so that you have a different piece of fabric on the top. It doesn't matter how you do that. Uh, there's no scientific you move three, you move four, or anything like that. Just make sure the top piece is different. And then your entire layer cake will be shuffled. So uh, you're gonna follow the instructions, <clears throat> and the instructions are right here, and it's gonna tell you to sew your C piece to your D piece, which is this right here. So you're gonna take this to the sewing machine, and you're gonna sew this entire set together, so there'll be 42 of them. Um, or 40 if it's a batik layer cake. A regular layer cake has got 42. And so however many pieces in the layer cake is how many blocks you're gonna have. So you'll either have a quilt that's five blocks by eight blocks, which is 40, or you'll have a quilt that is six blocks by seven blocks, which is 42. The cotton layer cakes, um, like this one from Moda, has got 42 pieces in it. The batik ones have 40. Why they do that, I don't know. But anyway, so you're gonna cut and you're gonna sew this entire stack together and you're gonna chain sew it. And chain piecing means that you don't stop between uh, and cut your thread between pieces. Once you get that finished, you're gonna have a long flag of chain pieced, uh, pieces sewn together so you can either take your scissors and you can cut those apart one by one, or you can use your thread cutter block, which is this. And you can take those pieces that are sewn together like this, say pretend these were sewn together, and you can just cut them like that, and it's really, really fast. We make these at Stitch in Heaven, so this is, um, this is a really good tool to have in your, in your toolbox for any kind of chain piecing. So once you get that sewn together, then you're gonna sew your A piece to your C and D piece, and that side is done. Then you're gonna sew your C piece to your B piece, this side is done. You sew this side to this side, and boom, your blocks are finished. Now pressing, you don't have to worry about pressing really because none of these, you wanna press uh, between each time that you sew, but None of these seams intersect, so it doesn't matter which way you press them um, and, until you go to put your blocks together. Now, once you have your blocks together, you're going to have them all lined up here. And <clears throat> honestly, I do not recommend you put this project on a design wall. Honestly, folks, it does not matter. Most of the people you're going to be giving these to really don't care if two fabrics match up at the same place. Um, it actually gives it kind of a nice, interesting look if sometime that does happen. Probably on this quilt, you can see, like right here, this is okay. It makes a really neat little design. Somebody's gonna say, how did you do that? And, you know, it's because you just let it happen. So what I recommend you do is you take your squares, take the first square, the second square, turn the second square once, add it to the first square. Turn the third square twice, add it to the second square. Just mix the blocks up. So your six blocks, your row, put it behind your sewing machine, and then repeat that until all your blocks are gone. Take all of those rows, 
sew them together, and then once all of the rows are sewn together, you can look at it and see what it looks like. And it's kind of fun. It's kind of like having a baby. You know, you never really know what it looks like till it comes out. So once you get the center done, you can decide if you want to put borders. You don't have to put borders on this quilt. Uh, if you want to, you can put either just an outer border, which we recommend a six inch outer border, or you can do like we do on this one and do a two inch inner border and a six inch outer border. Um, and then you just quilt it and bind it and it's done. Really, I can make one of these. I can start in the morning. I can get it cut out in 20 minutes. I can put my blocks together in about two hours. And by dinner time, I'm finished, put together with the borders on it, ready to go to the quilter. So we're gonna show you a few pictures of some options that you may wanna think about. Uh, we have, these are just some examples of different quilts that we've made up. We do have these most of the time. We have uh, uh, them in kits. So if you want to order just the kit with the layer cake, the borders and the backing, you can do that. So we make it real easy for you. So um, if you have any questions, be sure and leave me a comment. I'd love for you to subscribe to our channel so you can get more of these lessons in the future. And I hope you enjoyed this lesson on Scrap Crazy. This is Deb Trail from Stitch in Heaven.